One Disney park has closed yet again, Disney has issued some wild new technology patents, and you can now check out of a store without ever going to the checkout counter. That and more Disney news is coming up on DFV Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. We've got another snack-heavy episode for you guys today, including some super adorable new holiday treats. There are also new mini ears, more restaurant reopenings that you're gonna wanna know about. Okay, let's get started. First up, Disney is testing the mobile merch checkout option. So this is a new way to purchase souvenirs in merchandise shops in both Disneyland and Disney World. The test rolled out last week at World of Disney in Disneyland's Downtown Disney first, then later Mouse Gear in Epcot and Everything Pop at Pop Century Resort just recently. The new system can be found in the Disneyland or Disney World My Disney Experience app, depending on which coast you're on, and might make shopping a bit easier by letting you skip the line and pay for your merchandise on your phone, yay. You can either start shopping by navigating through the app or scanning the QR code displayed in the store, and you'll need to grab a designated shopping bag. You'll be able to scan the items you want to purchase, and they'll automatically be added to your cart, and you can check out right in the app. When you're all done, you get a QR code to show the mobile checkout cast member as you exit the store. They can help with removing security tags or wrapping any fragile items as well. This system is just in a testing phase right now, but overall we found it to be pretty simple and convenient, and it certainly helps that there's a line at the physical checkout. We'll let you know if the test expands to other stores. Okay, so Disney may alter ride photos for guests without masks. Now, up to this point, Disney's been withholding on-ride photos from those who are not wearing a face mask or incorrectly wearing a face mask. Now they have a tech solution, though. A PhotoPass cast member told us that many folks explain improper mask use on rides was an accident they didn't realize and or their child removed the mask accidentally. So to help solve this problem and allow folks who accidentally appear non-compliant in the photos, Disney is testing a new solution where the photos will be edited to show guests wearing a face covering. This way, those who are accidentally incorrectly wearing a face mask at the time of the ride photo can still purchase and see their pictures. Currently, the feature is being tested on Dinosaur in Animal Kingdom and Buzz Lightyear's Space Ranger Spin in Magic Kingdom. Disneyland has updated the expiration dates for unused tickets. If your Disneyland trip has been impacted by the closure, we have a new update about those unused or partially used tickets. According to Disney, unused non-promotional single day tickets that expire on December 30th, 2020 or March 31st, 2021 will have the expiration date extended to December 16th, 2021. Wholly unused, non-promotional, multi-day tickets that expire on January 12th, 2021 or April 13th, 2021 will have the expiration date extended to December 16th, 2021 as well, and the ticket will expire 13 days after first use or on December 16th, 2021, whichever occurs first. The website also states that guests with multi-day tickets who didn't use the entirety of their ticket between February 28th and March 13th, 2020 will have their 13-day expiration period extended to December 16th, 2021. Expiration dates on eligible tickets will be updated prior to the reopening of the theme parks. All right, let's talk about those crazy new patents they've got. We saw several new patents this week that could point to some pretty exciting inventions down the road. Disney recently filed a patent application for techniques for concealed vehicle reset. Now this tech would allow ride vehicles to transform to a second configuration during the course of the ride and then set aside a hidden area for them to return to their first configuration. That sounds kind of confusing, but here's an example. You're riding along, your ride vehicle takes you through a car crash scene and the car you're in changes in appearance when it's hit and then it has different pieces out of place for the rest of the ride. After you get off the ride, the vehicle pulls through a concealed area where it resets to its original configuration before a new party boards. Disney filed an animatronic related patent for a legged, high dexterity, self-balancing capable robot actor. Basically, this tech is a robot that's capable of standing on its own and moving in a similar fashion to a human without any help from support structures. The patent also mentions this tech being used as a potential meet and greet character, and that design looks a lot like Judy Hopps. So could this be something we see in Shanghai Disneyland Zootopia themed land? If you're interested in more of the patents and new tech Disney's dreaming up, we cover them all the time over on DisneyFoodBlog.com. 
All right, let's talk Hong Kong. Hong Kong Disneyland was one of the first Disney parks to close back in January, and now it's closing again for the third time this year. The park reopened in June, only to close again in July because of a rise in coronavirus cases in the area. And on September 25th, the park reopened for a second time and just recently unveiled their new castle. But now the park has closed for a third time due to rising cases and in line with government regulations. Disney's noted that it is in close contact with health authorities and the government and will announce a reopening date once they determine it is advisable. Disney Cruise Line has canceled February departures. All sailings through February 28th, 2021 have been canceled. As with previous cancellations, those who have paid their reservation in full will be offered the choice of a cruise credit to be used for a future sailing or a full refund. Guests who have not paid their reservations in full will automatically receive a refund of what they have paid so far. Final payment and cancellation policies have also been updated. Final payment on sailings through June 30th, 2021 will now be due 60 days before departure. And there will be no cancellation fee when a trip is canceled 60 days or more in advance, except for those booked in suites or concierge level. More details can be found on the Disney Cruise Line website. All right, let's talk Disneyland Paris gift cards for canceled trips. So Disneyland Paris is still closed through February 12th, but they're now offering an incentive for those with canceled trips due to the closure. These guests will be able to receive a 100 euro gift card to use during their Disney vacation when they rebook by February 12th and travel by September 30th, 2021. Okay, in Disney restaurant and food news, we've got more holiday snacks coming your way. First up, those holiday Oreo bonbons. Now, the Oreo bonbons we found before at Cape May Cafe, you guys know them. They are iconic and everybody loves them. They've gotten a little holiday makeover and you can now grab a four pack in the market at Ale and Compass over at the Yacht Club Resort where you've always been able to get them, but now they are holiday colored. So Oreo bonbons, if you haven't had them, are made of Oreo cookie mousse on top of actual Oreos with a little touch of chocolate ganache on top and some holiday sprinkles. You can pick up that four pack for $6.49. And over at the Contemporary Resorts Contempo Cafe, we found the adorable chocolate peppermint Yule Log, but is it as tasty as it is cute? The chocolate chiffon cake with chocolate peppermint mousse is actually pretty light on flavor for so much going on. It looks like it would be mega rich and chocolatey, but it was pretty mellow flavor wise with a really good texture. Try it yourself for $5.49. If you do want something very chocolatey, head to Lay All in Epcot's France Pavilion for a traditional bouche de Noël, a trois chocolats. There, how's that? Coming in at $6.75. This holiday dessert is made with three chocolate creams and a chocolate crunch biscuit. We didn't really pick up on the crunch, but it sure does deliver on the chocolate. And over at Beaches and Cream Soda Shop, at the Beach Club Resort, we tried the new cookie butter milkshake. The shake itself is a cookie butter milkshake with green and red syrup poured in your very own souvenir cup with a rim of Christmas sprinkles and frosting. It's all topped with a red velvet cupcake with buttercream filling, topped with green buttercream icing, a star cookie wafer, edible glitter, holiday sprinkles, and chocolate Mickey ears. Super cute, tons of frosting, very Christmassy, two desserts in one, all for 15 bucks. This is definitely over the top, but it is very tasty. And on to some standalone cupcakes. The eggnog cupcake at Disney's Saratoga Springs Resort and Spa is new to artist's palette this year. The cupcake is a spiced cake filled with eggnog mousse and topped with spice whipped cream. There's also an icing wreath, crunch pearls, and edible glitter. For $5.99, this is a good deal if you love eggnog and if you're a fan of pumpkin spice. If you're not, we'd say skip it. Also, at Artist Palette is the Peppermint Cupcake, which is a chocolate cupcake filled with peppermint mousse, topped with peppermint scented whipped cream and peppermint bark, also for $5.99. This one's a very rich cupcake with a lot of that whipped cream frosting, so we think kids would like this one a lot more than the Eggnog Cupcake, which has a lot more spice. But remember, it is peppermint, so if your kids aren't peppermint fans, be careful. And we got one more snack from Artist Palette over at Saratoga Springs Resort. This one is for our vegan friends. The plant-based macarons come in a pack of five for four. $14. The texture here was great. You'd probably never guess they were plant-based. They are peppermint flavored though, which wouldn't be our first pick for macaron flavor. It was a little too minty for us. Now over at the Riviera Resort, La Petite Cafe is baking up some Mickey gingerbread cookies that are exclusive only to this resort. The exclusive recipe includes honey and rye flour, and the backside of the cookie is coated in chocolate with the Riviera Resort lettering printed in a gold pattern. They're definitely sweeter than a standard gingerbread cookie, but our taste tester loved them. You get two cookies for $5.99. 
And also at Riviera, we've got even more treats at Le Petit Cafe this week. The Christmas cracker is a pistachio tart with a brownie and cherry reduction filling. Bright red ganache coats the whole thing and chocolate ties are on the sides. The filling inside was light and airy, almost like a mousse, and the cherries were very sweet and the brownie added nice flavor. Sweet, but not too sweet for $5.99. This one is really, really beautiful and eye-catching for sure. We also tried a seasonal cupcake, which was a pretty standard vanilla cupcake with chocolate filling, buttercream frosting, and mini M&Ms decorated to look like a Christmas tree. They pretty much have this cupcake at Riviera all the time. It just kind of changes based on the season. This one's $5.99 as well. And we also picked up the Noel Blanc Gloss and the Toasted Praline Cold Brew. The first is frozen cold brew coffee blended with white mocha, cinnamon, and milk, much more of a dessert than a coffee. And you're also going to find a Noel Blanc Gloss Latte on the menu. The Toasted Praline Praline Cold Brew features the resort's specialty blend cold brew served together with house-made praline marshmallow cream, so it's sweeter than most cold brews, but very tasty. Now it's finally chilly enough for Galaxy's Edge to be serving their hot spiced cider. About a week ago, we noticed the addition of the new spiced surabat cider and spiked spiced surabat cider to the online menu for Docking Bay 7 food and cargo, but we haven't been able to get it because it wasn't cold enough yet, quote unquote. We actually spotted it on the Ronto Roasters menu and we we were able to get it this week. The spiced surabat cider is made up of hot apple cider with notes of hickory smoke and winter spices for $3.79. Or you can opt for a spiked version for $13 that contains Maker's Mark bourbon. Okay, we found a new Mickey cookie. The Magi Pool Bar at Animal Kingdom Lodge is serving up a simple but impressive Mickey cookie for $3.99. This is a chocolate chip cookie with chocolate and vanilla frosting and some fun chocolate shapes on top. It did remind us of the Num Num cookie from Disney's Hollywood Studios, minus the giant chocolate chips, and it was very, very rich. This also reminds me a little bit of some of those cookies that they've had over at the Mara as well. So I imagine it's the same sort of concept. And we found a spiced Christmas cupcake with raspberry filling and vanilla buttercream at Roaring Fork at Wilderness Lodge for $5.99. The green vanilla buttercream and dusting of powdered sugar make it look like a snowy Christmas tree. It's definitely cute, but that cake is spicy and didn't really blend well with the fruity filling, as you might expect. So keep that in mind. All right, peppermint ice cream sandwich is back, you guys. This is one of our favorite ice cream sandwiches. It's returned to the Dino Bites cart in Animal Kingdom's Dino Land. For $6.99, you get two double chocolate cookies with vanilla ice cream sandwiched between them, and it's all rolled in peppermint candy pieces. Also, one of those cookies dipped in white chocolate, so red and white swirled white chocolate, which adds just that extra sweetness. It's so good. This is one of the best seasonal ice cream sandwiches they have, so definitely get it if you see it, and if you can handle peppermint. Some people are not peppermint fans, but this isn't too overpowering because you've got those double chocolate cookies as well. And the peppermint soft serve is also back in Animal Kingdom, so if you love all things peppermint, this soft serve is at the Anandapur ice cream truck at Animal Kingdom for $4.99. This year it features a swirled red and green color and will come served upside down in a cup with a cone on top for safety so they're not touching your cone. It's light and refreshing and it's a must if you love minty ice cream. And also in Animal Kingdom, that pumpkin cream cheese muffin that we loved so much has been flipped to become a gingerbread cream cheese muffin. It's pretty much identical to the pumpkin version just with a different spice profile. It was still really good though, and we found the gingerbread muffin at the cart outside of Pete Safari, heading towards Pandora for $3.99. And over at Creature Comforts in Animal Kingdom, we've got the Santa Mickey Moose. Now, this is a similar dessert to last year that we got at ABC Commissary over in Hollywood Studios, and unfortunately, neither one has really impressed us a whole lot. This year's mousse is a white chocolate peppermint mousse dome on a brownie base. It's topped with snowflake sprinkles and garnished with chocolate Mickey ears, but that brownie just kind of felt a little stale to us, and there's not enough peppermint flavor going on to really make that flavor profile pop a little bit more. So this just wasn't our favorite. Now, Arista Crepes in Disney Springs has a brand new, very, very festive crepe for the holiday season. This is a traditional crepe, but it's red colored and it is folded to kind of look like Santa Claus's jacket a little bit. Now, interestingly, this one's filled with eggnog pastry cream and pralines. Now, the eggnog filling is intense. So if you're on the fence about 
eggnog, this is not your treat. Otherwise, this was a sweet, tasty, and very, very unique and interesting treat for $6.99. Also at Aristocrapes, there's a new bubble waffle filled with vanilla ice cream and topped with whipped cream, cherries, jubilee sauce, and praline pieces. Cherry desserts are usually a little iffy, but the flavors were perfect in this dish, and the crunch from the praline pieces was an excellent addition. Try this one for $8.99. Now, bread pudding is back at the Polynesian Village Resort. You guys were so excited. Ohana bread pudding arrived at Kona Cafe at the Polynesian last week, but now you can get it once again at the Tambu Lounge, right next to the closed Ohana restaurant. Just like at Kona Cafe, there were no bananas in the sauce, even though it usually has them when you get it at Ohana. And this time, we didn't get ice cream with ours, so you can ask for ice cream. It's the same price as Kona Cafe, $12. And also at the Polynesian Village Resort, you can now get an entire pineapple filled with Dole Whip, which I don't really understand why you couldn't get that before. After all, they had the Lapu Lapu, which was a pineapple filled with rum, and they have the Dole Whip, so why can't you just combine them? But what you can get now is called a Lapu Hula, and you can get it at Pineapple Lanai. It's an entire hollowed out pineapple filled with pineapple Dole Whip and a little shot of coconut rum on the side for $14.25. It's a really fun presentation and a lot of dole up in there, so prepare to share. Now let's talk food discounts. Annual pass holders can now take 10% off food and non-alcoholic beverages when using cashless payment at some Epcot International Festival of the Holidays kitchens, but it's only available from 7 p.m. to park close. 13 of the 15 booths offer the discount along with refreshment port and refreshment outpost. You can see the full list over at DisneyFoodBlog.com, and it does include quite a few of our best of the fest choices. Over at Nomad Lounge in Animal Kingdom, we've got some new seasonal specials on the menu. First up, the roasted calabaza squash soup, which is served with ginger pear chutney, pickled jalapeno, and chai spiced and candied pistachios. If fall could be pureed, it would taste like this squash soup. It's served table side for some extra flair. At $14, it might seem steep for a soup, but it is very, very filling and it's delicious. For dessert, the Nomad Trio has a pumpkin pie tart, spiced Mickey caramel, and pecan pie tort. The the presentation was beautiful on this and all three desserts were delicious. At $13, it is a little pricey for the size. Now, Territory Lounge at Disney's Wilderness Lodge Resort was open for the first time since the park closures this week, and that was due to the cold weather closing Geyser Point. The hours for this lounge may be a little unpredictable, as it seems that Territory is only going to be open when it's too cold for guests to enjoy sitting outside at Geyser Point. But if you happen to see it open during your visit, stop by to enjoy some holiday cocktails. But something that is open every day now is Oasis Canteen over at Hollywood Studios. It's been open on a somewhat limited basis for some time, but it will now officially be open every day, at least through the holidays here. So if you're looking for a fun cocktail or anything from a full bar, you now have this option no matter what day you go. Speaking of bars, Sunshine Day Bar has also reopened over there in Disney's Hollywood Studios. This is on Sunset Boulevard, and this is the location that used to be a turkey leg location. Before that, it sold McDonald's french fries. Now it's the Sunshine Day Bar, and it's currently open just Friday through Sunday for the time being. So you've got another bar spot with specialty cocktails in the park, at least on the weekends. And there have been a few more reopenings at Hollywood Studios this week. Epic Eats, which is the funnel cake stand right next to Oasis Canteen, that has reopened. And KRNR, the rock station food truck right next to Rock and Roller Coaster, has also reopened for your quick snack needs. All right, in merchandise news, we've got the wintry blue ears. These cornflower blue mini ears were spotted on Shop Disney and give us some very wintry vibes. The velour ears with a sequin bow are $29.99, and we've spotted them in Disneyland, and we're on the lookout for when they may arrive in Disney World as well. We did spot some new in-park ears, though, in the Mexico Pavilion in Epcot. The embroidered ears feature some little hidden Mickeys. These are also $29.99. And Sorcerer Mickey ears have arrived in Disney World. We picked up a pair at Mouse Gear in Epcot, but you likely see them elsewhere if they're still in stock. And for those cat lovers out there, we spotted a Dooney and Burke Disney Cats Magic Band in Legends of Hollywood at Disney's Hollywood Studios for $58. This is a limited edition magic band, only 2,000 were made, and it matches the tote bag we saw last week. Now we've got another magic band for you. The Dooney and Burke Italy Magic Band is a limited edition release of just 1,500, and yes, a bag collection will be coming soon to match. We spotted the Italian-inspired band in Epcot's Italy for $58. And some big news here, the final mini main attraction collection arrives early. The very last collection of that mini main attraction merchandise will be hitting stores soon. 
And now, Merch Pass entries for this main attraction collection will officially open on December 8th at 7 a.m. Pacific time. That's a full 10 days earlier than originally announced. So mark your calendars if you're looking to score something from this collection, which of course is the Fireworks Happily Ever After collection, and we'll keep an eye out for when it reaches the parks. And over in Disney California Adventure, we've got an exclusive annual pass holder popcorn bucket. This is the Jack Skellington popcorn bucket, and you can find it at Grizzly Peak Airfield Popcorn Stand. The bucket lights up, and you'll need to show a photo ID and valid annual passport in order to buy it for $20. We did also spot that AP exclusive Mickey Snow Globe Sipper we saw at Disney World recently at Award Wieners in DCA. If you need help shopping for your Disney-loving friends, we've got tons of gift guides over on DisneyFoodBlog.com, and we have our very own Teespring shop with loads of Disney-inspired merchandise. There's masks, there's sweatshirts, there's t-shirts, and more. So you can check it out just below this video. Make sure to place your order soon in order to get it before Christmas. Thanks for listening, you guys, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.